Hey guys, I'm gonna go over three lessons from UFC 203. Um, they're not as technical, so I'm not gonna, I've been like going over the techniques lately, but these are just more, um, they're more classroom lessons or lessons on uh, uh, more strategic lessons. Um, but there's three lessons from UFC 203, which was last night in Cleveland. Uh, good fight. Um, the main event, Stipek Majocek, um knocked out uh, Alistair Overeem. Um, and then the semi-main, um, um, Verdum got a um, unanimous decision over Travis Brown. Um, someone's shooting. You hear that? It's kind of irritating. But anyway. Um so these are my lessons from the, from those fights. Um, um, number one, Jimmy Rivera against Uriah Faber. Uh, Jimmy just looked too strong, too strong, too big. He looked like two weight classes above Uriah. Um, I know they weighed in the same, but uh, Jimmy Rivera is huge, man. Um, and it was a tough one for Uriah because he was fast and huge, and he looked like he hit like a truck. So to me, the only strategy that Uriah could have um, um, could have uh, employed a little more effectively was just trying to, and he did try. So this one's like it's so easy to say, but it was just looked like it was so difficult. Um, just get in a little more, and not try to try to hurt Jimmy, but just get inside with combinations and take him down. I think I think with Uriah last night that was his only um that was his only ch uh, chance. I mean, the guy was just hit too hard, was too fast, was countering everything every time uh, Uriah would throw his punches or even kicks. It looked like Jimmy would come back right away with harder punches and harder kicks. So I think the only strategy left for Uriah uh, would have been the takedown and it would have been a gamble to get it but I thought that was his only um, uh, strategy I was surprised he didn't do it more but like I said it's so easy to judge <laughs> from from the comfort of my couch but that would have been my only strategic change that I would have made if I was in his corner so when you're fighting someone that big and strong um, then you got to go to your biggest uh, strength. And to me, Uriah, it would have been his takedowns and his wrestling, uh, try to get some scrambles. Um, I just don't think he had the power to stand with uh, with Jimmy. And he didn't have the speed to outmove him with strikes. So I think he needed to set up some shots and take them. So that's that's that fight. That would be that would have been my lesson number one. Um, the second fight I want to talk about was one of the prelims. Uh, uh, these guys are related to me, both of them. Brad Tavares, because he's from Hawaii, and, and he was on season 11, our team, Ultimate Fighter, uh, with um, you know the one that um, Court, Court McGee won. Uh, and then he's from Hawaii, you know, so kind of a relation there. Uh, there. But he fought a guy named uh, Caio um, Malingas, who's... Um, from Brazil and his connection with me is that he is trained by um, Glover and Glover was in his corner and Glover was trained by me so I don't know there's a really there was a uh, both were like relatives but Brad won the fight he won a split decision um, and I think um, the reason he did and what what Kyle could have done differently is that Kyle was just throwing one punch at a time He's loading up on every punch, every punch he was trying to get with bad intentions, every kick he was trying to get with bad intentions. Um, I felt like he could have flowed with some combinations. And when you flow with the combinations, um, like if you just shot one bullet at a moving target, your chances aren't as good as if you, if you shoot a, a shotgun. So you're trying to shoot like, you know, buckshot, and then your chances of hitting your target are much better. You want to throw it in combination. Bing, 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 bing. You know, like three or four punches in a row, his chances would have been better 
of landing one, and they might not have had the power of one powerful punch, um, but uh, but um, but at least he would have landed one. And the the benefit of doing that is then you land one. All you gotta do is get them off balance a little, or just daze them a little. Um, and then that sets up your power punches. But if you just throw one at a time, trying to load up on every power punch, you become predictable and you telegraph and you, you become easier to, uh, to counter. So um, that, to me, that was what um, Kaio should have done, thrown his combinations more, um, set up everything with the combination. He would have set up better clinch work, uh, better takedowns. He did get a takedown or two. But um, uh, Brad just got right back up. But I think it would have been a lot um, more um, beneficial to Kayo if he threw his punches and combinations. And Brad did that. Brad moved and threw his punches and combinations. Kayo came in right. I mean, he was stalking okay. I think he was following a little too much. He wasn't cutting off the cage. But when he was in, 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 in range to punch... He just threw one at a time, one power punch at a time. And it's good to mix in with your power punches with your combinations. But if that's all you're throwing, it's not going to be as effective because it's easier to predict. And on the other side of that, if you throw all fast combinations with no power, you're just going to pitter-pat the guy. You're not really going to hurt him. So there has to be a balance of uh, fast-moving combinations and then uh, throw in, it'll set up your power punches. Okay. So to me, that's what Kyo should have done, and that's what Brad did, and that's why, to me, that's why Brad won, because of his punches and bunches. And you've heard that before, I'm sure. And there's a reason you have, because it works, okay? All right, so I talked about those two fights. Third, ter third fight I want to talk about was the CM Punk and the Mickey Gall fight. Um, do you hear that shooting? What am I in South Central fucking L.A.? That's irritating. I mean, do you hear that shooting? They need to shut the hell up. It's really irritating. It's too late. Anyway, um, uh, CM Punk against Gall. I think I think my takeaway from this fight is if you guys remember the um, the Randy Couture versus um, the the boxer um, James Tony. Um, Randy just. Faked a shot, like a punch, high, and then just went low, took him down, and then just beat him. And that was his strength. Um, and I think that's such a, um, a great strategy, and that's what exactly what Mickey Gall did. Great strategy. He actually acted like he was going to engage with punches. So um, CM Punk came, was coming forward. He put his hand like he was going to throw a right hand. Dropped immediately, changed his level, dropped immediately, got the takedown, and just uh, mauled him from there. Um, I think that's a great strategy for, for, uh, for a grappler or for, for anyone that doesn't want to, for the street. Uh, you know, in the street, if you don't want to throw, uh, throw with your partner or with your opponent, <laughs> I hope he's not your partner. <laughs> you imagine beating up your partner in the street? If you don't want to throw with the guy on the street and you don't want to exchange punches, I think a great, um, a great way to you know, f a, you know, not have to be punching is just fake punches real quick, high, and then drop your level, take, get the takedown. That's what Randy Couture did to James Tony. That's what uh, exactly what um, Mickey Gall did to uh, CM Punk last night. And the way... I mean, to me, the way to avoid that, um, so I'll go on the other side of that. If I knew my guy was going to do that, like if I was James Tony trainer, um, I, didn't think CM, I didn't think the CM Punk golf fight would go that way. Um, but if I was James Tony's trainer when he was fighting um, Randy Couture, yeah, good luck because Randy's such a great wrestler. But um, one of the things I did with Chuck in the beginning was lower his stance more. So he has a lower, wider stance. And then he can throw his punches from there, and it makes him harder to take down. I'm not saying it's impossible to take down, but when you lower your stance and you're a striker, you want to stand up high and, and punch hard, but you are much more vulnerable to takedowns. So you have to sacrifice a little bit of your power and your, your mobility, and you have to lower your level, widen your stance just a little bit. 
You won't be able to kick as, as, as uh, fast. You won't be as mobile. You won't be able to punch as hard or with, with as much leverage, but you will be harder to take down. Boxing stance is not the same as a grappling stance or an MMA stance, and either is a Muay Thai stance. So you need to widen your stance a little bit, lower your level um, to prevent that. So that would help prevent that from gall. I'm not saying it would. I didn't even know what his strategy was. But I, but for the say the James Tony fight against Randy Couture, if you're a striker and you don't want to get taken down, not only do you have to move laterally a lot and stick a lot of jabs, you have to. Even though this doesn't feel right as a striker, you have to widen your stance and you have to lower your level. Okay. So those are my three lessons uh, from UFC 203. Thanks for coming. Please comment on this, even though it won't be live anymore. Please comment on this Facebook, and I'm going to put this on my uh, YouTube and on my uh, blog. So thanks for coming, guys. Thanks for your support.